Hi guys, welcome to this video and we're going to take a look at some of the best e-commerce platforms you can choose for 2021. And stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'll be revealing the e-commerce platform I would personally choose for a medium to large scale application. So if you want to support the Avalex family, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get on with the video. And there's plenty more information in the description down below about this video and the newsletter as well. So first of all, I want to talk about the commonalities. What do all of these things do? Now, I want you to make sure that when you're thinking about development or whenever I do one of these videos of choosing this platform or choosing that platform, right? That we don't get into a flame war, right? Because that happens all the time. People bow up and say, no, this is the best platform in the world. Whoa, it's not. Every platform has its pros and its cons. And depending on the environment and how you want that to adapt in the environment, you actually need to choose based on number one, the preference, the preference of the customer, the preference of even you, let's say if you want to set up your own e-commerce store, how much time you're willing to invest and will it actually benefit you? You see, you could get into a Ferrari and still do 30 miles an hour, or you could get into a Corsa or a Opal if you're in America and still do 30 miles an hour. So really, do I want to invest all the time and effort it takes to get a Ferrari when a Corsa will do, right? And you may not need all those features just yet. So don't get into the flame war. All of these platforms will do the cart. They've all got like a wish list functionality. They've got the filters. They've got the products, product category, filtering those products and filtering product categories, search of the products and also search filtering and you know uh, taxes shipping so forth all of these things right out the box so any one of these will not like steer you wrong so the first platform we're going to choose is magento magento is very well known i'm sure you've already heard of it magento is a huge platform that's now been acquired under adobe it's open source on the community edition it has a paid for edition now, just to note with the paid for edition, it can get quite expensive, but the pricing will scale with your business. So if you sell more, then you have to pay more. If you sell less, then you pay less. And that can go up and down with your business. Also, what's really great about Magento is it has plenty of partners in terms of platinum partners and in terms of regular premium partners. Those partners are normally agencies. Those agencies will then be able to develop a specific product based on their expertise in Magento and they have a full certification program. The reason why this is beneficial is because if you become one of those certified developers, you pretty much got a good shot at being part of one of those agencies. They pay plenty of money, by the way, for developers because we know that developing for Magento is already expensive, right? 60 to 70 pound an hour freelancing, but an agency will charge maybe 70 to 100 pounds an hour, depending on the support and depending on the process. So. These things really are beneficial and these things benefit not only the customer knowing that they're gonna get a good quality product, but they're also gonna get a quality developer. Magento is great out of the box. Its backend is written in PHP. So its backend and its API is coupled very closely together. So the backend is written in PHP. It's got a GraphQL API, plus for the GraphQL, not REST, GraphQL, less requests, uh, then it's also having the ability to obviously couple that with an SPA or PWA on the front end. So you can build it in Vue or React, one of these guys right here. You can build a front end for that. And the reason why it comes number one is because it has so many features out of the box, even with the community edition. And even if you wanted to go for the paid for edition, you can pretty much get that by downloading modules and plugins from the Magento store. So Magento has its own marketplace and you can purchase modules, you can download modules for free as well there and you can pretty much got the full feature set. You know, you don't necessarily need to pay for the Magento premium and locking yourself into the platform. Now I will give you uh, something of an insider experience with a Magento Platinum partner. I worked with one of those agencies and uh, the agency found out how stubborn Adobe can really be. I'm gonna knock them for this one the page builder that comes with the premium feature, they updated that feature. They forced them 
onto the brand new version of the Magento page builder module and they wouldn't let you roll back. That's a terrible idea. Loads of companies said they dropped support for that module and they wouldn't even like to go back as well. It's a core feature that you can't reverse back. And they broke all of our front end systems. They broke many companies' front end systems. They didn't apologize for it. Not only after all the complaints, they still said, nope, we're doing it. Major disadvantage, plus patches and so forth. Another thing that you must understand is also Magento comes with a large learning curve. So be careful with that one. And the next thing we're going to be talking about is Shopware. Shopware is amazing. It's totally free. You don't need to pay for a thing. They do offer hosting solutions. Again, there's a bit of a learning curve in there, but I found that the installation of Shopware is not really much different to installing WordPress. You literally can create a database even in the installation setup and just run it. So if you've got your own server and you just want to put it up it, and you've got MySQL, you just hook it up. It'll even create your database for you as long as you provide in the username and password for the MySQL, it'll set it all up. Now what I really am a fan of with Shopware is the fact of its architecture. So there's a bit in the middle. Now that bit is PHP and Symfony again. Again, we need PHP and Symfony because we need to, for example, export out stripped out databases, redo caching, and we need to do that on the command line because the command line is incredibly efficient. And so those are, again, PHP for the root core of the data and serving of data. But what's really cool about Shopware is it is actually fully headless. So the back end is actually written in Vue.js, just like you would write the front end in Vue.js. So you see how your skills can transfer from back end to front end, right? I don't have to learn another language to do the back end, whereas with Magento I did, I had to know PHP. Now, if you want to modify the core of Shopware, yes, you will still need to have PHP. But for me, it's really cool as a front end developer because when I modify the front end, I can also have the ability to modify the back end. And so that's really amazing. And the bit in the middle, it's serving data out like it would the front end, and it's using the REST API. So there's a REST API for the front end, and there's a REST API for the back end. And you can fetch all the data, build your modules, and develop what you want. So those skills can now be transferred from front end to back end UI. And if you wanted to modify the core data, yes, you will still need to know PHP. But what's really cool is when you upscale, when you have larger teams, you have people dedicated just to modifying, let's say, the PHP layer. And then you can have people dedicated to modifying the back end and also the front end and interchanging those skills. So it flows really nicely. And we never touch what those core developers do in the core of Shopware. So everything is perfectly compartmentalized and encapsulated. And a little bit of a thumbs down there for the headless total solution there, only because they're using REST. It's not the fact that it's totally headless, that's what I wanna see, but the fact that it's not GraphQL, you know, GraphQL allows us to sort of combine these things together with REST, we have to sort of, for example, request the user information and then request all the account details for that user. That would have to be done twice with REST, whereas with GraphQL, I could do that in one request. I could say get the user and get the user's addresses in one request. So that's why we have the thumbs up for Magento using GraphQL, but a little bit of a thumbs down for the complete headless solution that doesn't have GraphQL. Come on guys, shopware, update your API layer. However, REST is perfectly fine, REST is okay, it will do the job and this is an incredibly feature rich platform and things that you have to pay for on Magento like the page builder is totally free. Shopware, totally free. You get the page builder, you get everything, it's all open source, it's all community driven and you, you don't have to worry about any sort of vendor locking or locking you into certain updates around the platform. It's very, very flexible in the way that it's built. And that's why I like that decoupled structure, because if you don't like something, you get to remodel it. You get to change that without necessarily touching the core of the product, because when the company update the core of the product, well, they can replace your changes and then your changes need to work with the new changes. Then you need to put them back in. You see how that works? Doesn't work. So headless just allows you to say, that's the core. You can modify it very lightly 
and then you can have that for the back end and the front end where you can change your skill sets interchangeably between the front end and the back end dead easy and it's like decoupled from the data layer which is awesome the next one is PrestaShop. PrestaShop again is a dedicated platform. Now the reason why I put PrestaShop a little bit lower is because Shopware has got a lot of skin in the game. So is Magento and they've got awesome feature sets. It is RESTful so it hasn't got that GraphQL API layer. It is a REST API layer. It is free, it's totally open source again, it's totally extendable, it's totally capable. It does all the core things that you would expect it to. But really, it's not really centered around PWA, which is what I really liked about Shopware. And even Magento was the front end was really considered separate entity. Whereas with PrestaShop, not so much, it's still, you can kind of still write the front end with all that PHP stuff. You can do it with other platforms, but Ideally, we'd like to step forward in the web, especially in the e-commerce industry. You know, everything wants to really ideally uh, update with the web. Um, and especially if you were going to pick this technology in 2021 of all times. So it does have a REST API, so you can still put a PWA front end on it. No problem with that. The back end is still PHP. So I put this on the third rug because Magento's just like top dog. It's always been like the number one platform that people default to and it's got so much adoption. Shopware has got amazing architecture that's really pushing the industry forward and press the shop It's got a great UI. It's got everything. It's a very dedicated e-commerce platform But it just isn't anything really extra special. The other two have some nice caveats They have some cons but they have those caveats that really push them above this platform choice now, one thing I'll say about Presta Shop is its module store is nearly exactly the same popularity as Magento's. There's so many modules, your mind will be blown. So that really is something to bear in mind with this platform. If you need to integrate some payment gateway, if you need a plugin for some reason, you pretty much got it. Okay. But you do have to be careful with that because as PrestaShop was predominantly PHP first and PHP templating first, just remember that those modules, unlike Shopware and so forth, may not have that REST API on them. So you've got to be really careful about what modules you've got there and make sure that they actually do. If you're going to have a PWA using Vue or React, these guys right here, uh, you need to make sure that the platform and this module that you're going to install is compatible. So that's the only caveat, and that's kind of why I put it in the third place. But the reason why it's in the third place is because it still is a dedicated platform to the e-commerce space. The final platform we're going to talk about is WordPress. WordPress is not an e-commerce solution, but there's something called WooCommerce. And WooCommerce will again allow you to run multi-million pound businesses. WordPress is simple and WooCommerce is following the same pattern. Now, as this isn't a dedicated platform, I'm not going to put it in any of the above. These other platforms are dedicated to the e-commerce space. They do have more features. They do have more modules out of the box than WooCommerce. But WooCommerce is, of course, going to grow in massive popularity. However... WooCommerce is usually for the smaller type businesses and, you know, it could still run a multi-million pound business with many brick, brick and mortar businesses. But it's not really considered the right choice if you were a professional developer that was working for a large scale company or a company that wants to scale. If you had a smaller company that was asking you to freelance for them, build them a quick website. WooCommerce is perfectly fine and it can sell millions. I mean, all of these platforms can make millions, so don't get into that flame war. But when a company wants to scale and when a company wants to be fully e-commerce, like their entire business model is e-commerce and they're going to want features and so forth, you want to go with those platforms that are going to be more reliable in the, in the choices that will need to come when you scale. So ideally WooCommerce is kind of at the bottom of there. You know, if you want to set up a quick store, you know, it's great and it's easy and it's efficient. It's got that PHP shortcodes in there and so forth. But WooCommerce, even though it's a, a great platform, I wouldn't necessarily say to a business that's got, you know, multi-million pound turnover who wants to be dedicated to the online space. I wouldn't go, yeah, let's go ahead and install WooCommerce. No. 
Not really. When you've got dedicated platforms, dedicated architecture to e-commerce, it really isn't potentially a good idea to say we'll go with the WooCommerce thing. However, if you just wanted to set up a website really quickly for yourself, you don't want a big learning curve. Those other guys, they've got a bit of a learning curve. I mean, even if you wanted to adapt WooCommerce, you've still got a learning curve, you've got no PHP, then you've got to make sure that data comes out on an API layer, such as REST, and then you've got to integrate that on a front end. So, you know, at the end of the day, these all have learning curves, but, you know, generally it's considered that WordPress is designed for the simplicity and ease of use, and, you know, it generally is a little bit easier to work with but it won't be as feature rich and it won't have what those other packages have which is why it's fourth on my list all right guys so if you want to support the Avalex family go ahead and hit the subscribe button hit that ding dong bell to make sure you get those notifications and of course there is a link in the description that is the newsletter subscription and so if you click there, you'll be taken to the website and you can sign up for the newsletter. And in that newsletter, I will be publishing all of the details and information that's gonna be absolutely amazing. And I'll also give you source code and so forth. So you can go ahead and join the Avalex family and the Avalex Academy so that we can all join forces together and start to really build out a great platform for learning and sharing. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in more content, go ahead and take a look at these guys right here.